A lot of people say that the glycemic index of the foods you eat, aka how much they spike your blood sugar, is key for health and weight loss. In fact, there are entire diets centered around eating low glycemic index foods. But what does the actual science say? Today I'm going over peer-reviewed scientific studies on whether or not you should care about the glycemic index slash glycemic load of the foods you eat. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time researcher with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other people's studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And today I'll be talking about glycemic index. Specifically, first I'll give you some very brief background on what that is, and then I'll talk about some studies on whether or not it's a useful measure, and then I will go over studies on whether it actually predicts real-life things like health and weight loss. If you Google glycemic index, or GI, you will probably see a lot of people talking about it as if it is the holy grail score of how healthy a food is, because they say that eating low GI foods is great for satiety and health and weight loss. And glycemic index is a score that represents how much a given food spikes people's blood sugar on average. So if a food has any carbohydrate in it, then it is going to have a glycemic index score. Sometimes those are findable on the internet and sometimes they haven't been studied yet. But in general, you can look up a food and find its glycemic index value online. And glycemic load is just glycemic index times the amount of food you eat for that food. So it's just taking volume into account. And higher glycemic index or glycemic load scores means that a food spikes people's blood sugar more. So people who care about GI try to eat foods that are low in GI. And this actually has a lot of people scared of high GI foods. Before I get into the studies, I'm going to start with some fun facts based on the actual glycemic index data available from studies out there, and specifically I am referencing the Harvard website on glycemic index for these fun facts. So according to the glycemic index diet, where you want to eat foods lower on glycemic index because those foods are healthier, ice cream and chocolate are healthier and better for weight loss than many fruits and vegetables. And similarly, soda is healthier and better for weight loss than brown rice and sweet potatoes if we were to go according to glycemic index. And similarly, french fries would be healthier than boiled potatoes, according to this. So fried in oil is better than just the plain vegetable, according to GI. And then my favorite fun fact is that the very best food, according to glycemic index, with the lowest score on this table, is fructose, pure sugar. And yes, that is the same fructose as in high fructose corn syrup. Now I think these examples raise some red flags for how much stock we can actually put in glycemic index as a measure of how healthy a food is and how much of it you should be eating. The first study I'll be going over today comes from a top nutrition journal, and these researchers looked at how reliable glycemic index is in predicting how much a given food spikes people's blood sugar, because that's the whole measure. Glycemic index is supposed to just be telling us how much a food spikes people's blood sugar, so these researchers wanted to see how reliable that measure was and how much it varies. And for one example, this study tested white bread, which is actually used as the reference food for calculating the glycemic index of other foods historically. So generally all foods are compared to white bread to give them a glycemic index score. And these researchers looked at how much people's blood sugar responses to white bread varied both within people over time, so over repeated tests, and also between people. And the researchers found that people's blood sugar responses to white bread were so incredibly variable that for a third of participants, white bread counted as a low glycemic index food. For another third of participants, white bread counted as a moderate glycemic index food. And for the last third of participants, it counted as a high glycemic index food. So this means that a given food could be either very low GI, so barely have any effect on blood sugar, or very high GI, so a massive spike in people's blood sugar, just depending on the person, and even depending on the day or the time of day. And this has also been shown in other types of foods, so not just white bread, and also in mixed meals. So it's looking like glycemic index isn't even a good predictor of what it's supposedly measuring. <laughs> And unsurprisingly, a lot of researchers writing these peer-reviewed scientific articles are now bashing glycemic index, saying it's a useless measure and that it should not be used to guide food choices. So for example, here are multiple quotes from papers. These are actually pretty aggressive for scientific writing, especially in these really good journals. So glycemic index is getting a lot of flack from people who are literally experts in blood sugar and nutrition science. So why is it that blood sugar responses to the same food are so variable between different people and even within a person over time? 
Well, there's quite a few factors that have already been found to explain a lot of these differences. And some of them are cholesterol levels, insulin sensitivity, BMI, inflammatory factors, and age with younger people having lower blood sugar responses on average, and even gut microbiome, so the specific types of bacteria you have. And actually, I'm planning a whole other video just on gut microbiome and blood sugar, so let me know if you'd be interested in that in the comments below. And there are also other non-bodily things that were controlled for in this study, but that are known to affect people's blood sugar responses to food. And that includes the specific physical properties of the food, which you can't really control for or know how to compare to glycemic index, like the size of the kernels and flour, or whether things are blended, or how thick your bread slices are. And then also your cooking method, so whether you bake it, or you steam it, or you microwave it, or you saute it, is going to have an influence on how that food gets broken down in your body, and how much it spikes your blood sugar. Even the ambient temperature, so the temperature of your room, actually affects how much blood sugar spike you're going to get from something. And also, the foods you eat something with drastically affect how much your blood sugar is going to spike, and it's not always in a logical way. Like, it's not always the case that adding a fat lowers GI, even though that logically should happen, according to most people who follow the GI stuff. It actually ends up being pretty bizarre and all over the place and really hard to predict how combining different foods is going to affect your blood sugar. So that means glycemic index is not very useful for applying to real life in your meals, even if it were actually able to predict blood sugar successfully for individual foods. And now for the third segment of this video, I'm going to go over studies that look at how glycemic index relates to different health outcomes and weight. So first, a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials looking at BMI and glycemic index found that across 2 million people, giving people lower glycemic index or lower glycemic load diets did not cause them to lose weight. In fact, more studies have found the opposite direction, where people who eat higher glycemic index diets actually weigh less. If you follow my channel, then this might not be too surprising for you because I often go over studies showing that high carb, low fat diets are really good for weight loss. There's a ton of studies out there. If you're interested in that topic, check out this playlist here after this video. And next, one of the things that a lot of people who are interested in glycemic index talk about as an advantage of low glycemic index foods is that they're higher satiety. So they say that higher GI foods just aren't as good for keeping you full and satisfied. But in fact, one of the highest glycemic index food, potatoes, is actually the most satiating food according to a bunch of studies on satiety index. So that does not logically make sense with the idea that higher glycemic index equals lower satiety. And next, for diabetes, a meta-analysis, also of randomized controlled trials, found that giving people a lower glycemic index or lower glycemic load diet did not improve A1C or fasting glucose. So it did not improve these main measures of diabetes. It did, however, improve inflammatory markers as well as fasting insulin, which I'll talk about in a moment. And for a related fun fact, there are a bunch of studies from several decades ago finding that giving people with diabetes a diet solely composed of white rice, fruit and fruit juice, and sugar actually massively helped with diabetes. And those are some of the highest glycemic index foods you could possibly find. In fact, sugar, besides fructose, is the highest glycemic index food in general. And they also found that this kind of diet helped people with high blood pressure. And on that note, for heart disease, a meta-analysis of prospective studies, so not randomized controlled trials, not experimentally manipulated, found that people who ate a higher glycemic index diet and higher glycemic load diet had a slightly increased risk of heart disease. But that was only true for women. But wait, if glycemic index is a bad measure, then why is it predicting a few of these health outcomes? Well, this is the problem with trying to give all foods some kind of universal score, because it generally doesn't work because foods are just way too complex in terms of how our body handles them. So for example, even calories, which is pretty much the simplest, best able to be measured aspect that applies to all foods, still does not do a very good job of describing how our body actually treats them in terms of the amount of available energy that can actually get converted into fat. Which, again, if you are a regular here, then you are familiar with this idea. But if not, check out some of my videos on how calories often breaks down when you actually look at different types of foods and how they cause weight loss or weight gain for the same number of calories. And glycemic index is even worse, I'd say, because it comes with a lot of baggage and is correlated with a lot of things. So one of the biggest ones is the fact that, across the board, 
refined grains have higher glycemic index values than whole grains. And it is very well known that whole grains are better for you than refined grains. So pretty much any experiment that gives people a lower glycemic index diet is going to be swapping out refined grains and instead adding in whole grains, which we already know that doing this is really good for all sorts of health conditions and for weight loss, regardless of glycemic index. So the researchers could swap out refined grains for whole grains and then say, look, giving people a low glycemic index diet improves their health, when really all they've done is switch out a not so good food that happens to be high GI with a good food that happens to be low GI and saying, well, look, it's because of GI, but that you can't say that. You have to actually scientifically show that that's why it's good, which so far the evidence does not suggest that is why whole foods are better than refined foods. And based on all the science out there, it's pretty clear that if someone were to do an experiment where they replaced people's refined grains with whole grains and then also added a bunch of fruit to bring glycemic index back up or even higher than before, they would still find all these health benefits. So they would increase glycemic index, but add in fruit and whole grains, and therefore people would be healthier and lose weight. And the same problem holds and is even worse for correlational studies because we know that glycemic index is correlated with whole versus refined foods. And therefore you could just be picking up on differences between whole and refined foods, even if it has nothing to do with GI itself. And in fact, I think it's pretty crazy how little GI predicts like in terms of BMI, given that we have this known correlation with healthy foods often happening to be lower GI. So my verdict based on all this research is that glycemic index is not a useful or reliable measure and there is no compelling reason that you should be making food choices based on glycemic index. There is no good reason to be scared of high glycemic index foods just because they're high glycemic index. I think that this is yet another example of how things are pretty much never as clear cut as the media makes them out to be, especially when it comes to science. If you want to lose weight or prevent or recover from heart disease or diabetes or cancer, then Choosing low glycemic index foods is probably not going to help much, but what you can do is choose healthy foods that studies have already shown very clearly are helpful for these sorts of conditions. So specifically things like whole grains, legumes, fruits, vegetables, and nuts are pretty much universally good for you across the board and don't have all this weirdness where they're all trying to be put on one health scale like glycemic index. If you eat these kinds of foods, you will be doing so much better than if you were to eat according to glycemic index, and you'll especially be doing better than all the people who are eating a low glycemic index diet that consists of chocolate and ice cream and soda and high fructose corn syrup, because they're all pretty low glycemic index. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Have you ever tried eating according to glycemic index? Have you found that it's useful for some foods in your own life? Let me know below in the comments. And if you like my videos and you want to support me in making them, then please head on over to my GoFundMe, which is for one-time support, or my Patreon, which is where we have bonus content and extra fun research findings between videos and the ability to ask questions and whatnot. So if you're interested in that, head on over to the Patreon. And if you like this video, please like and share it to get this information out there so people can know that they do not have to be scared of foods just because they are high in glycemic index. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.